Hey guys and girls, it's David with Beagles on Fire. It's Good Friday. And you know, to a lot of people, every Friday's a good Friday as far as the world says. You know, we, we rabbit hunters think it's good, it's Friday. That means we're gonna get to run and hunt this weekend. But today is Good Friday. And what Good Friday stands for, we, we know as believers, Good Friday uh, is, the, is the day that Christ was crucified on the cross and was buried. But the good news is he didn't stay there. And so what I want to talk to you about uh, is, is the power of the resurrection. You know, um, Matthew 28 Verse 6 through 8 said, the, This is the angel talking to Mary when she came to the tomb. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead is go and is going ahead of you into Galilee. You know, things that stand out to me there, it says, He is not here, he has risen. But also, it's just as he said he would. You know, there's a lot of people that are going to tell you stuff that's going to happen, but he fulfilled the prophecy in the Bible there. And then it says, uh, come see the place where he lay, where he laid at. In other words, he's not there anymore, you know. And that's, uh, that's something, you know, you, you talk about all kinds of other prophets that, that are in the world, whatever one we want to talk about. We want to talk about ones in the Bible. We want to talk about a little more modern-day prophets that people call them prophets. And you can go visit their tomb. Uh, and they're there. When you go over to the Holy Land, I've never been there, but when you go to the Holy Land and you go to visit the tomb where Jesus was buried, he's not there anymore because the stone was rolled away and on the third day he arose. And so, you know, I want to tell you a little story about a beagle um, that is a little take that we can tie to Easter, so to speak. Obviously, nothing is as powerful as the resurrection of Christ. But one day I loaded up some young dogs. Uh, it's been probably a year and a half, two years ago at the most. And uh, loaded them up, put the collars on them, put the shock collars on them, loaded them up, and drove back to the place where I was going to drop them out to run. Now I would estimate from the time that I loaded this dog I'm telling you about up till the time I got back to where I was going to run may have been <coughs> five to six minutes maybe. And when I got there, uh, got out of the ranger, walked around, opened the doors up to let the dogs out, all the dogs came out but one. One was laying on its side, lifeless. And I thought, what is going on here? This is crazy. The dog was just fine when I loaded it. Well, the dog was laying there lifeless and limp. So I immediately took the collars back off of the dog and uh, I cupped my hand around the dog's nose and I breathed breath into that dog. I pushed air from me into that dog. I probably did this three to four or five times of, of strong breaths and the dog started to breathe again and I started rubbing the dog's chest and I, and I, and I just kind of watched the dog a little bit and the dog came back too. And you know, that dog, I first looked at it and I thought that dog's dead. There's no hope for that dog now, it's dead. But I thought I've got to try what I can try. And so I did what I felt was the only thing I could do. And later on found out that the dog had 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 something inside of its throat. It had, it had swollen up in its throat. I don't know if it got bit by a spider. Uh, something had happened to the inside of the dog's throat. I did not cinch the collar down so tight it would turn off, you know, cut off its windpipe. I put on enough collars in my lifetime to know how to put a collar on. But that pressure that was put on that neck caused what was going on inside to cut off that airway of that dog. Without the airway, the dog had no way to breathe. And so obviously it was, it was gonna be doomed. Had I loaded that dog up and drove 30 minutes or 15 minutes, that dog would be dead today. But the dog came back around. But I breathed air into that dog. And you say, well, David, where are you going with this? And how does that have anything to do with the resurrection? Well, I feel this way. God breathed breath 
back into Jesus, his son. And that's how he rose from the dead. And because God breathed breath into him, he was able to live again. And you know, the unique thing about it and, and the neat thing about all that is, is that he can still breathe life into us. And you say, well, I'm not dead. Yes, you are if you're not a believer. You are dead spiritually, which is worse than being dead physically. And if you have not asked God to breathe that life into you, then one day you're going to die for eternity. You will be dead spiritually. And uh, you say, well, that's fine. I'm just going to go sleep somewhere. And, and, you know, life's over. Just like when a dog dies, there's no afterlife. You can believe that if you want to, but what if you're wrong? You know, eternity is a long time to be wrong. So I encourage you to go seek God and ask God to breathe that life into you, and he will do that. If you don't know how that's possible, you feel free to reach out to me or reach out to uh, someone in your community, church, whatever, and they'll be happy to explain that to you, I'm sure, as would I. But the unique thing about that dog coming back around is that dog was helpless without someone. I, I was like the father of that dog, so to speak. I was the shepherd over the flock, so to speak. I'm the guy that's running the dogs. I'm the guy that's handling the dogs. I'm the trainer. So I was like the father figure for that dog. And had I not took the time to do that, that dog would be dead. And God is our heavenly father, and he always has time to breathe life back into us. And, you know, you can tie that several other ways, too. You can say, well, David, I'm a Christian, but, you know, a lot of things have happened and gone on. And... I'm not doing what I need to do for God. I, I'm, I'm out of church. I'm, I'm, you know, and I'm not saying you got to go to church to be a Christian and all that stuff. That's not my argument here. But we can drift away from God. And our life as we know it in that regards can become dead pretty much. And God can revive that. I, I've seen that in my own life time and time again. All you have to do is reach out and ask for help and he will help you. And, uh, but... On a different note, if you do have a dog that goes down or you have a puppy that's born, um, and I've raised a lot of puppies and I've had this happen with puppies a lot, <clears throat> puppies can have fluid inside that needs to be removed um, and gotten out. You can do that by suction. You can do that by holding the puppy's head really good and and slinging, slinging downward. Uh, I don't mean you're throwing the pup, obviously you're holding on to the pup. But what you're doing is you're moving that pup by holding on to it. You're not causing its head to rattle around, but you are slinging that fluid out of that puppy so that it can breathe. And, um, but if you need to try to do any kind of, quote, CPR to a dog, you would simply cup your hand over its, you know, close its mouth, cup your hand over its nose, breathe into it, and then rub its chest. And you can manipulate uh, the heart to beat again and it fill the, the lungs with air. I'm not going to tell you that'll work every time, but that's the last resort and that's what you got to try to do if you're trying to revive a dog like that that's down. So that's a little advice there, but the most important thing is that you understand that he is alive and he is risen and he's not in that, he's not in that grave somewhere. We serve a risen Savior. And um, so there's a song that I've, heard a recent song it's a more modern uh, contemporary singer named Lauren Daigle and uh, she does a song called Still Rolling Stones you know everybody wants to think about when the stone was rolled away that's when he was at the tomb but he's still rolling stones away those of us that uh, have accepted Christ understand that he rolled a stone of eternal death away for us and he can make changes in your life and roll those stones away that seem like you're trapped in a cave and uh and you can't get out. And he can still roll those stones away for you too. But I hope that you have a great Easter and uh, that you go and uh, attend a service somewhere and, uh, and honor Christ's resurrection this Sunday. But happy Easter from Beagles on Fire. And I'll be talking to you all again soon. Have a blessed day.